Menor, August and Vic, August and Spirit and Eve. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone. And I welcome you all here to Jim's funeral mass. Jim was a very much regular here, a part and parcel of the fabric here of St. Nicholas's for many, many years. And as we gather here around his body, as we gather around the altar, we think of his grieving family. And as we gather here in our numbers, our, we pray for Cahill, Michael, Jim, Rosemary, Madeline, Mina, his grand and great-grand children, his brothers and sisters, his family and friends. Today, we say farewell to a good and faithful servant, servant of God in life and received in death. So as we gather here around the altar, as we gather around Jim's body, let us all acknowledge that we're all sinners in need of God's love and mercy as we pray. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord of mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. And let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully granted through this mystery, your servant Jim, who has now fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice and rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. So I invite you now to please be seated as we listen to our first reading our psalm that will be sung, and our second reading. First reading, a reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they did appear to die. Their going looked like a disaster. They're leaving us like the end of everything, but they are at peace. If they experience punishment as people see it, their hope was rich with immortality. Slight was their affliction, great will be their blessing be. God has put them to the test and proved them worthy to be with him. He has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. When the time comes, his visitation, they will shine out. As sparks run through the stubble, so will they. They who trust in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful will live with him in love. For grace and mercy await those he has chosen. The word of the Lord.
reading from the book of Timothy. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up the hill and there he sat down and was joined by his disciples. Then he began to speak. This is what he taught them. How blessed are the poor in spirit, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed the gentle, they shall have the earth for their heritage. Blessed those who mourn, they shall be comforted. Blessed those who hunger and thirst for what is right, they shall be satisfied. Blessed the merciful, they shall have mercy shown to them. Blessed the pure in heart, they shall see God. Blessed the peacemakers, they shall be called sons of God. Blessed those who are persecuted in the cause of right, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people abuse you and persecute you and speak all kinds against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Be seated for a few moments, please. When I sat down last night to put a few words together for Jim, I was in a wee bit of a, what, what way would I put it, a mismatch because Jim didn't like to be centre of attention. He coiled away from all that sort of thing and today he is centre of attention. And I could almost hear him in my ear as I was putting pen to paper saying, for the mark, I'm embarrassed with all this attention. Jim had three greats. His great love for his family, his undiable love for Maureen, his wife, and his great love of his faith. 
As we know, Jim himself was a quiet man who kept himself to himself and never look, looking the focus or the limelight to be taught on him. He was a man who worked tirelessly for his family. He did everything he could, putting them first. Putting his faith aside, his great love, his great soulmate was his wife, Maureen. They went everywhere together. They did everything that possibly could and became a model of a husband and wife, not just to their family, but to the community here in the area of St Nicholas's. Maureen was his life. And both of them had a great devotion and faith in Our Lady, going for many, many years to Lourdes. They also went to Rome in a time when many people thought that was somewhere and out of Mongolia. People just didn't go in them days. But Jim and Maureen went. Because centre to their relationship was their faith. Jim and Maureen coming as they did here to St Nicholas's in their day coming here and praying. Jim was, we would call, old school. He didn't like all this newfangled dangle stuff. He'd said to me many, many times, when my funeral comes, Father Mark, less is more. I didn't want any fuss or focus. But we can't not today go without saying a few words about Jim and his commitment to his faith, his commitment to this church, his commitment to his family, the commitment to this community. He was a man of devout faith. I remember whenever they held his 80th birthday and the house was packed and he went in, he seen the crowd and he left and he never come back. But for his 90th, it was centered around the mass and he didn't mind. He didn't mind at all as long as the mass was celebrated. That was first and foremost in Jim's mind. Well, he didn't let you away with too much either. He just had to give you that side look and you knew then, right, I've overstepped the mark here. Jim lived his faith. He just didn't reserve it into a Sunday celebration. He tried to live his faith in everything he did during the day. And now they were separated in death. They are united in death. His true love, Maureen, and himself are back together again. And having known Maureen, I would say she's down there going, what kept you? 17 years. And he'd say, I have a, I had a few things to do. And palmed it off. We thank 
Jim for his faith, for his devotion, for his passion in his faith. We think of him and Maureen today as we say farewell to a good and faithful servant and we know that as soon as Jim closed his eyes for the last time they're instantaneously opened in eternity and there standing before it was Christ himself saying welcome good and faithful servant now come come and find your rest Today, we say farewell to a long and faithful servant here in Dundalk. And each and every one of us carry our own story of Jim. Each and every one of us will always be reminded of Jim because each and every one of us hold our own stories, our own thoughts, our own prayers as we day to day pray for Jim. And now God has taken Jim home. May he be fixed forever in our memory and in our heart as someone he was not crushed by the burdens of life. As the second reading said, Jim has fought the fight, ran the race, and now has his reward. We remember that life is joyful with laughs along the way. May our trust in Christ and his promises Keep us together in anticipated joy of meeting Jim again. Jim, may you now rest in peace. Amen. And I'm in a in spirit and name. Amen. I invite you now to please stand for our prayers of the faithful. My friends, since God has loved us so much, we too must love one another. No one has seen God, but as long as we love one another, God will live in us and his love will be complete. And we know that love is stronger than death, so let us pray to the God who first loved us. I invite those who are doing the prayers of the faithful to please come forward. Papa, live Christ's commandment of love. May he now hear those words. Come, O blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jim showed much love for others in this life. May he now experience the love and mercy of God. Lord, hear us. From his place in the kingdom of the Father, may Grandfather intercede for us and continue to help us. Lord, hear us. We pray for all those who mourn today, that they will receive strength to assist them in their sadness and grief. Lord, hear us. We remember all who have died, especially nannies, babies Eamon and Anne. Today, may they enjoy the promise of eternal happiness. Lord, hear us. Heavenly Father, these are our prayers, spoken and unspoken, we make through your Son, O Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in unity, the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. I invite you now to please be seated for our offertory procession.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you the sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Jim. We beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving saviour may find in him a merciful judge. who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for it is at your summons that we come to birth, by your will that we are governed, at, and at your command that we return on account of sin to that earth from which we came. And when you give the sign we who have been redeemed by the death of your Son shall be raised up to the glory of his resurrection. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like you fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, Give it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, my Lord and my God. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that for taking the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one with the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world to bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Eamon, our Archbishop, Michael, his assistant, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Jim, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we, my merit powers to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever.
At the Saviour's command and form be divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, grant us peace, Lord Jesus Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
wore starched white shirts, button up the neck, and he'd sit in the shade and watch the chickens peck. And his teeth were gone, but what the heck? I thought that he walked on water. Said he was a cowboy when he was young. He could handle the road, and he was good with a gun. And my mama's daddy was his oldest son. And I thought that he walked. Please start. Lord God, we saw left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey. Mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our brother Jim may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Again, just before the final blessing, just to reassure the McAleer family that each and every one of you are in our thoughts and prayers at this time. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and to serve our Lord.
Thank you.